Hello and welcome. I'm your technical host, Shirley Paulson. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar on managing your WorkSafe BC insurance costs. If the sound is not working as you would like, please click on the bottom left of your microphone. Click the up arrow to select audio controls, just as you see on the screen here. Although your microphone is not enabled, you can ask questions at any time using the Q&A icon. Thank you to those of you who have submitted or will submit questions as well. Please use the comment section to chat with other attendees, provide your thoughts, and let us know where you are from. We will invite our presenters to respond to as many questions as we can during today's session. Our moderator today is Wayne Arandas, Chief Operating Officer of the Manufacturing Safety Alliance of BC. Welcome, Wayne. We're just waiting for uh, Wayne with his um, microphone. Just one moment. Well, thank you for that. And your camera, Wayne. Thank you, sorry, my apologies. Just having a technical. No problem. Thank you, Shirley. Okay, thank you to everyone joining us here today. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking to you from the unceded territories of the Stolo people, part of the Coast Salish region of Southwestern British Columbia. For those who do not know us, the Manufacturing Safety Alliance of BC is the not-for-profit health and safety association serving the manufacturing and food processors. Please call us to answer any of your health and safety questions to help keep your workers safe. We also invite you to visit our website for safety training resources or other information on the Occupational Health and Safety Standard of Excellence or core certification for manufacturing. Many companies consider their work safe BC insurance premiums as fixed costs. In fact, they are quite variable and to a large extent in your control. Taking action to improve your health and safety in your workplace will not only help you retain staff, but is also a critical factor in minimizing your ongoing insurance costs. Today, we invite two experts from WorkSafe BC to show you how to understand and improve the experience rating that determines the rates that you currently pay. Learn how you can tap into online planning tools to improve health and safety and reduce your overall insurance premiums. Our presenters today join us from WorkSafe BC. They are Megan Martin, manager of OHS Consulting and Education Services, and Erica Lai, manager of classification and rate modification, Megan and Erica, welcome, and I'll turn it over to you for your presentation. Thank you so much, Wayne, for the wonderful introdu introduction today. And I'm glad to be able to speak to so many wonderful people, explaining a bit more about your insurance rates. On the next slide, I'll cover the agenda. On our agenda today, as Wayne introduced, we will talk about how your experience rate contributes to your overall insurance premiums. Also, what online services can do to help you understand your costs and plan improvements. Why your rates may be going up or down next year and where you could find that detailed rate information, as well as how to start your own health and safety planning. 
Now I'll explain more about online services and some features you may not know about yet. I just wanted to make note that resources at the end of the presentation, they will have active links that you'll be able to refer to and help guide you back to some of these key points that we discussed today. Our online services provide more employers with a variety of tools to view information and transact in an easy way. That's also secure. We have tools related to insurance, health and safety and claims management. Administration settings allow you to control who in your organization has access to what particular tool. And I'll actually go into those now. Let's look at insurance first. From this page, you can update your address and other account details, such as ownership information, your CRA business number. You can also see your clearance status, usually updates immediately after reporting and making a payment. You could also set up clearance alerts to be notified when changes are made. Here you can also view your information um, from your detailed rate information letter, um, which your firm receives uh, that'll show your classification unit, your base rate, your experience rating adjustment, and your net rate. On the next slide, you can see how you can report payroll Submitting that payroll um, reports gives you an option to print or save confirmation of a transaction that's made. There's also an option to go paperless. You can also pay your premiums um, by credit card or uh, direct debit, and you could save those transactions or confirmations and view your transaction history, scheduled auto payments, um, and miscellaneous activities there related to accounting. Now we'll move into health and safety, which is really where my background is because I work in occupational health and safety consultation and education services. So this is the part I get a little bit more excited about. On the health and safety page, you can access health and safety data. You can use the employer health and safety planning toolkit, which this is a snapshot of. And here you can learn about your injuries, the claims that are happening. You can compare your experience with your peers as you see in that right hand corner. You can identify trends and plan initiatives um, for your workplace. We will show you a demo of this video at the end of this presentation. I, on this slide, you could also um, view your inspection report. So if you have multiple locations and it gets complicated figuring out when a site has been inspected, um, all access can be granted here. Uh, you could see your inspectional history. Um, while the uh, manager at the location that the officer spoke to gets a copy of the report, a copy is also placed on file in online services. So yet again, those with multiple accounts um, being able to see what's going on across BC can sometimes be complicated. I speak from experience as an employer that had that challenge myself, and these enhancements have been made to support those sorts of situations. Go on to the next slide. Here you can submit your employer incident investigation report. So here's a sample of what that looks like. This is a requirement that must be submitted. Um, one thing that's nice about some of the recent enhancements is that now you can um, save in the middle of this and step away and do something else in your business and then come back and just restart it. Um, it wasn't quite as uh, functionally powerful as it is right now. So please take a look and utilize this. You'll also see that it's able to pre-populate a bit of the information um, to help save you some time in reporting to WorkSafe BC. With the notice of project, I don't expect many manufacturers are probably using notice of project a lot. It's heavily used in some industries such as construction, but if you do require, certain projects require that employers provide written notice to WorkSafe BC, and all of that can be done through your online services account. Now we'll go into the claims piece. What can you understand from your claims? On the next slide, it'll show you that you can um, actually see and submit all the information related to your claims. You could submit your Form 7, which is the um, employer's report of injury to WorkSafe BC. 
If a worker has been injured, um, you can submit this form online. And if you use your own systems, you can also use our business to business service to send those reports directly from your system. So we're trying to figure out how to integrate better with systems that employers are using as well, but also supporting employers that don't have existing systems so that our system can provide them a service for them. Here you can also view and access information about the injured workers, including the status of their claim, the return to work information, details of the incidents, and documents that um, we've sent relating to the claim and more. If you need more information about the business to business services that I mentioned, you can search that out on worksafebc.com. A little bit more to show you about uh, the claims related, related tools that we have available. If you pay a worker while they're unable to work and we pay you um, those workers wage loss benefits, you can view, search and download all of that information, all those payments right on online services. You can also conveniently and securely upload claim related documents directly to a worker's claim. And you can access your monthly reports that list the costs associated with your worker's claim. And if you're not already taking a look at those, I highly recommend you do. Um, back when I was an employer, I did notice that sometimes I would find errors. Um, I managed multiple locations and sometimes it would get confusing. In some cases, even our workers reported that they worked for the wrong employer. So if uh, you're not looking at those claims cost reports, I highly suggest you start that. Now let's talk a little bit about signing up and managing access for this. On the next slide, it'll show you the instructions. I'm gonna give you a moment to read through these. I find no reason to read them out loud to you. So I'll give you one moment to soak this in. Now I've heard that many of you probably already have access to online services. So I have a few more slides here, but I'll go through them rather quickly so that I'm not using your time explaining things that you don't need to know about. On the next slide, it talks about administrator rights. So this is um, if you want to become the administrator or an employee that's authorized to do so, you need to provide the WorkSafe BC account and your payroll report ID or the internet application reference number. Um, the person that's responsible for administration of the accounts has abilities to assign other um, people in your organization access rights as well. So it's a critical role within the organization. You might wanna make sure that you have the right person designated with this ability. On the next slide, it'll show um, what access rights um, that administrator can use and how they can go in and make those adjustments. You can also find all of this at worksafebc.com. So I'm not going to cover the details of this slide with you as it specifically relates to those roles. Um, and only those who have the ability are probably highly interested in this. So I'm going to go to the last slide of this portion of the presentation on online services. Here is a snapshot of everything that online services can do for you. There are enhancements made all the time. This may not even be all the abilities that um, are available at this point. We're making adjustments based on feedback from each of our users. So if you have feedback in utilizing these online services, please provide that to us because these updates are being made regularly to support you. Now, I will let Erica explain how insurance premiums and experience rating can differentiate employers amongst their peers. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you very much for the information on online services, Megan. Um, like I, Megan mentioned, my name is Erica and I'm um, with the classification and rates team. Um, in the next couple of slides, uh, starting with the next one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through a bit of background about the class of rate system, but also specifically about the experience rating program. So let's, starting off with some of the background on um, the, the two sides of the system, there really is two sides. And you'll see here on the left side, it pertains to the classification system, whereas the right side pertains more to the rate setting system. So uh, looking at the classification system first, what we do is we take BC's economy and then we break them into sectors, 
and then into subsectors, and then finally into the classification units, which each of uh, each of the employers are assigned to. We then, um, take, when we look at the right side, the rate setting system, uh, we take the classification units and then we group them into industry groups and then further into rate groups. Um, and then the insurance, uh, the industry uh, base rates are then set at the rate group level. However, like I mentioned, this presentation will focus more on um, how each individual firm can impact their own rate, and that is through the experience rating program. So what the what is the experience rating program? Now, what it is, is uh, on the next slide, you will see that uh, ER refers to the surcharge or discount applied to the employer account. It rewards firms with above average health and safety performance with a discount while creating an incentive for below average firms to improve or adopt better health and safety practices. Um, this program also includes built-in dampening measures to prevent any large fluctuations from year to year, while ensuring that the program also remains responsive to a firm's overall performance. So on the next slide, you will see that um, the single biggest factor that the firm has control over regarding their ER surcharge or their discount is controlling their claims cost. Prevention is key. However, reducing wage loss payments um, can also have a large impact as well. That highlights uh, the importance of maintaining an effective return to work program. Now, to calculate the appropriate surcharge or discount, the ER program looks at a firm's claim costs, which is the total payments on claims in relation to the size of the workforce or payroll to get a ratio. We then compare the firm's claim cost to payroll ratio to that of the rate group, which represents the average for the industry. So if a firm has a ratio less than its rate group, it is performing better than the average and will move towards a discount. Alternatively, if the firm's ratio is higher than the rate group, it's performing worse than the average and therefore it'll move towards a surcharge. And the experience rating offers as much as 50% discount off of the industry base rate or as much as 100% surcharge, and that results in the net rate. And it's the net rate um, that is used to calculate the firm's insurance premium. So the next slide, let's take a look at an example here. Um, let's use CU71415, which is Planey Mill. It has a base rate of 6.22% or 6.22 of $100 payroll. A firm could be paying as little as $3.11 um, if they have maximum uh, discount, or they can be paying as much as 12.44 for $100 payroll. And that, again, depends on the performance. In this particular case, you can see that the difference in payment is as much as $9,330. Now on the next slide, um, the, the calculation of experience rating, it, it is quite complex, but the, uh, the formula itself may be complex, but it really just breaks down into three simple steps. Looking at the first step, uh, we take a look at the, the performance, which represents the firm's clean cost to payroll ratio, in the most recent three years. And we refer to this as the three-year window. Anything prior to the three-year window is referred to the history or experience rating factor. On this diagram, um, it shows the three-year window for 2022. And you'll see there uh, that the calculation year, which is 2021. So the three-year window is the three years leading up to the calculation year. And the calculation year is the year in which the rates and ER surcharge or discounts are calculated, and we do that for the upcoming year. So to include as much available data as possible, we use claims costs up to June 30th of the calculation year. And, um, oh, sorry, to go back to the previous slide, I just have a little bit more information. Uh, to ensure that the program is responsive, each year is weighted for experience rating calculation, and we put the heaviest weight on the most recent year. Now, keep in mind that claims cost um, use is, it, it goes to the year of the injury. So let's use an example here. An injury took place in 2018. It could have payments or costs paid up until 2021. What we do is we tally up all the costs that's paid until June 30th of 2021, and then we bucket it back to the year that the injury took place. So the firm's 
recent performance is really a blend of the historical performance, which is anything prior to three year window um, and the three year window itself to determine the overall performance. And the amount of blending is determined by the level of responsiveness, which we're gonna take a look at um, in the next step. So like I mentioned, the, the second step um, is responsiveness. And what responsiveness looks like is how much can we rely on the recent performance to represent the overall health and safety performance of that firm? What we're talking about here is really statistical credibility. And we refer to this as the participation level. The participation level is calculated by measuring one, the size of the workforce. So the larger the firm, the more emphasis we place on the three-year window and the less on the history. And the smaller the firm, the less emphasis is placed on the three-year window and more on the history. The second, um, uh, second lens that we look at is the risk of the industry. So higher risk CUs, um, we put more emphasis on the three-year window. An example of the higher risk CU would be shaker shingle mill versus a lower risk CU, such as accounting, um, we will place less emphasis on the three-year window and more on the history. So in summary, the larger the firm's workforce, the greater the risk exposure, um, or the riskier the industry, the greater the risk exposure. So what we're really saying here is we will put more weight or the higher the participation level if there's a higher um, risk exposure. And now let's take a look at the third step, um, which is the final step, and it's the calculation. We really balance the performance and the responsiveness to calculate the discount or surcharge. Now, what you see here is what our system looks like. We don't actually manually calculate it. The system calculates uh, a firm's ER in the same manner for all accounts. But this just kind of shows you um, all the, the different steps coming together. And on the next step, um, ultimately, uh, the experience rating program is uh, what we hope to achieve is to deliver reasonable outcomes. Every aseptic claim assigned to a particular firm is counted for experience rating purposes, with the exception of um, firms with pre-existing, or sorry, uh, claims of pre-existing injuries uh, or cost relief, uh, certain occupational diseases such as asbestos, non-traumatic hearing loss, and also COVID-19 costs are also excluded from the experience rating program. Another one is third party recoveries, uh, which are also an exception to the ER program. And on the next slide, you'll see that um, we also have dampening measures in place to prevent penalizing a firm due to an anomalous uh, high costing claim or any high costing years. So one of the measure is um, that we have here is the per claim limit. So for the purpose of calculating ER, we'll use 50% of the first $70,000 of the claim. And then for the next 50,000, we only take 50% of that cost. And anything above 120,000, we only use 10% of that cost. And when there is a fatality that occur, we use a five-year rolling average for all fatal claims to calculate uh, the impact on the ER. And that's to ensure that we treat all lives equally. We then apply the per claim limit to the cost um, for ER calculation purposes. Now, the most recent um, annual average fatal cost uh, for the five-year period, which is 2017 to 2021, is $373,000. And like I mentioned, the per claim limit applies to that. Another measure we have is uh, limiting high costing years. So we actually cap any variance for a firm at three times that of the, of the rate group's average. Another um, uh, damping measure is the participation level. And uh, again, participation level dampens the impact of high costing claims on smaller employers that have less payroll to absorb any vol uh, volatility by placing more weight on historical performance. So that's why some of the smaller firms or lower risk, um, risk exposure firms will see that we put a bit more emphasis on the, uh, on the history, like I mentioned, is to absorb any volatility of the rate. And so we've talked about dampening measures for firms with an occasional high costing claim or high costing year. Um, what if a firm consistently has high costing claims, uh, higher costing claims in the rate group for consecutive years, and you're seeing surcharge close to 
it's not really fair um, for other firms in the rate group to constantly subsidize the cost generated by these firms uh, year over year. So this is where the excess cost surcharge program comes in and it allows WorkSafe BC to more properly rate firms with ongoing high costing claims. So firms may be removed from the program um, when their performance is consistently improving, but let's take a look at the criteria. So a firm qualifies for excess cost surcharge program when the firm's average claims cost to payroll ratio, ratio is three times more than the rate group for three consecutive years, and the firm has an ER surcharge of 90% or more, and also the firm has 50 or more non-healthcare only claims in five consecutive years, ending with the most recent year of the three-year window. So they have to meet all three criteria to enter into this program. Now, once the firm qualifies, a firm will be subjected to the excess cost surcharge until uh, they meet the criteria to exit. And they have to meet um, two criteria for two consecutive years. The first one being that the firm's experience rating surcharge is below 90%, or the firm's claims cost to payroll ratio is less than three times that of the rate group. So it's a bit easier to exit the program. It's actually uh, one of the criteria for two consecutive years, then they get to exit. Um, for 2023, we're looking at around 17 firms in the excess cost surcharge program. Now, um, before I turn the presentation over to Megan again, uh, I just wanted to um, see if anyone has any questions. I'm also coming on video in case there are any questions from anything that's been discussed so far. So we've covered online services, but I think the real technical topic is about the experience rating. So if there's any questions about the experience rating, um, how it affects your business, this would be a great opportunity for us to engage in some dialogue. Or if there's um, questions that often um, get sent to MSABC um, that we could help field now, we would, uh, we'd like to give everyone an opportunity to share their experience, their questions. We can all always hold until the end of the presentation as well, um, if you wanna gather your questions until then. I'm just looking here. I think I have a message or a, a question here. Um, if the EE going on maternity leave and have a workplace injury, in that case, do we do the work safe need to pay the EE during the maternity leave, or can they close the file and continue to provide treatments needed by EE? So I'm not sure, Megan or I don't know if either of us are really the experts on this question. So I'm assuming E means employee. I often use that as an abbreviation. So basically, it sounds like the question is, if an employee is um, getting ready to go on maternity, they have a workplace injury that occurs uh, before they actually go on their maternity leave, um, uh, will WorkSafe BC continue to pay them um, for compensation costs such as wage loss while the person is on maternity leave. Um, the technical part about that, um, I'm not able to answer at this time. I would like to refer to our claims and rehabilitation manual and someone in the claims department to get that answer. So I'm more than happy if uh, that person who's asked this question wants to contact uh, megan.martin at worksafebc.com and I can give you that specific answer. But if it is an accepted claim, I do know that the medical costs uh, will continue to be play, paid while that person is on maternity leave. I do. Um, I am able to answer that part of it. Thanks, Megan. Um, another question is, um, can you maybe explain a little bit more on how employers can access their scorecards? 
I'm thinking with the scorecard, you might be talking about the employer health and safety planning toolkit. Right. Yeah. And I will be talking about that a bit further. So um, when I started this presentation, I explained how you could find that in your online services. So that is one avenue. But as we know, there are many different ways to get to the same answer. So later on in my presentation, I will show you how you can find it through the WorkSafe BC website. And I'll tell you right now as well, if you type in E for employer, um, H for health, S for safety, P for planning, T for tool and K for kit, so E-H-S-P-T-K. If you type that into worksafebc.com, a webpage with all of the information and access um, will show up there and it'll actually give you the ability to log in from there as well. Thanks, Megan. Uh, maybe just one other question that came in and then we'll probably let you continue with your presentation. Um, how long does it take to see improvements in the rate? Um, can you, can it be as little as one year, uh, question around the improvements to your experience rating? Good question. So, um, like I mentioned, so we will do, there's a calculation year and then the following year is the rate impacted. So for example, if there's a huge improvement to let's say 2022's claims cost, you won't actually see the impact until 2024. So. Um, just remember 2022 is the year that you see the huge improvement. 2023 will be the rate or the year that we calculate the rates. And then 2024 is when we'll see the impact. So if, if you're doing a, a lot of changes to the program, you're seeing that the claims cost has significantly decreased in the current year. Just um, make sure you include the calculation year and then it's a following year that you would probably see an impact to your experience rating. Great. Thank you. Cool. Okay, I'll turn it back over to you, Megan. Wonderful, thank you so much. And thank you, Erica, for that great presentation. Erica gets to explain all the technical technical stuff. And I often get to talk about the fun stuff. Erica probably thinks her stuff's real fun too. It's just very detailed. <laughs> Mine's a little more nuanced with health and safety. So I am going to be reviewing the employer health and safety planning toolkit. Uh, but I wanted to start so we can progress to the next slide. I want to start with the power of data. And we have this data available to you on our website. So anything that I'm talking to you about right here, please feel free um, to search online and find, find it out. Um, all of this data is collected whenever claim information is submitted to WorkSafe BC. We then categorize and theme the workplace injury and claim information and identifiers such as the type of accident, the body part, the worker's occupation, how severe the injury was, and how long the worker was off, how quickly they came back, and a host of other health and safety information related to return to work and cost metrics. And uh, we put all of this online to help um, industry and employers figure out how to make improvements so they can see what's going on. We amalgamate this data at an industry level to highlight that industry performance and the trends as well to show individual employers the specific injury and claims picture together as, long as, the as well as the cost trends. Um, that the employer will see through the employer health and safety planning toolkit. And we know that getting this data effectively to you can help. This is why we have a shared data strategy that can be found on worksafebc.com. On the next slide, I'll actually start walking you through a bit of that strategy that you could find. And from the homepage um, on the left-hand side of the screen, what you're seeing there is all of the interactive tools and dashboards that we have available to you, as well as, a view, as, well as view and download a provincial and industry level data and our annual report under the data download section. Under our interactive tools area, you will see the first key tool is the employer health and safety planning toolkit together with the links to our industry health and safety dashboards. 
We also have links to various infographic style health and safety information under data at a glance and specific calculators that can help you understand the true cost of a workplace incident to help you understand things like various manual handling and ergonomic issues. So if you click on the industry health and safety data link, it will take you to what you see on the next slide. The industry level data homepage. From here, you can access various industry level dashboards and analyze things like your industry's injury and claims trends, the serious injury trends in your industry and see how they're occurring, the workplace related deaths in your industry and the trends over the last 20 years, and where we are inspecting in your industry, how often and what orders and risks are being seen. I'll pause there for a second just to let that sink in. You can actually get inside information into understanding what WorkSafe BC is doing and other employers by taking a look at this. And I used to love using this when I was an employer because I would use it to kind of check my health and safety program. I would see what orders from the regulations were being written most frequently. And I would ask myself, is this something that could happen in my workplace? This is also a great conversation piece to use with your joint health safety committee or health and safety reps so that you can have productive health and safety meetings together. So please feel free to take a look and utilize some of the information you find from the shared data with them there. The next slide will give you an example of some of the um, injury specific dashboards. This one happens to be for serious injuries. Again, you can see filters on the left hand side um, that you could utilize. Um, so on the right, where you see the body breakdown, the body map, the left side is showing the column where you can actually filter for your industry specific information there. And these industry level data tools are also linkable from the employer health and safety planning toolkit. And that is what we are going to see next. So now you have a sense of the bigger picture. And now I want to go into the specifics of the employer health and safety planning toolkit. We will have Jennifer play us a video here. It's about seven minutes long. And while that does seem like a long time, I happen to think that it goes by rather quickly. So if I could get your help starting this slide with the video, it would be appreciated. As an employer or health and safety professional, understanding the data specific to your organization is critical to your job. The Employer Health and Safety Planning Toolkit helps you identify areas where you can improve, build business cases for where to invest, and showcase potential savings that come from better health and safety performance. Accessed through WorkSafe BC's online employer portal, the toolkit removes the guesswork from injury prevention planning, enabling you to focus your efforts on reducing injuries and risks specific to your business. The main page gives you a quick overview of your company's data and performance. You can see your quick stats, including your most frequent incident type, your financial summary, including your most costly incident type, and quickly see how you compare to your competitors on some key metrics. The series of buttons across the top of the main page lead to each of the tools. Lower down on the page are business questions that the tools can help you answer. Clicking on a question or a button will lead you to the related tool. Each tool offers valuable information allowing you to further understand your areas for improvement. You can model your potential cost savings, explore your risks, and identify prevention opportunities. Let's take a closer look at each of these tools. The Experience Rating Forecaster can help you better understand your health and safety cost performance. See what direction your performance is trending, forecast your future insurance premiums, and see how much you are paying relative to average performance. 
you can model how reducing your injury and claim costs through better prevention and recovery at work programs will impact your insurance premiums. Helping you create a business case using the projected savings. The peer comparison charts show you how your performance compares to similar employers on key health and safety metrics. First, you can see how you compare in terms of your insurance costs. The chart shows your discount or surcharge relative to others in your industry. The higher your experience rating, the higher your insurance costs. For example, companies of a similar size with lower experience ratings due to better health and safety performance will have a competitive advantage because their insurance costs are lower. The other two key metrics are injury rate and claim duration. Ideally, your business should be below average in both injury rate and duration. Health and safety and recovery at work are business aspects that can give your company a competitive advantage. Knowing where you are currently gives you a clear picture of your opportunity for improvement. The injury breakdown maps give you a detailed look at the lost time incidents that have happened in your workplace over the last five years. The first chart shows the most frequent injuries in your workplace. The second chart shows the most costly. You may find that the most costly incidents are not always your most common. Using the View Data button shows you a quick summary table. Look for differences in the count and the cost numbers for the various accident types. Clicking on the chart shows you more detailed information on each specific claim, including location, severity, costs, and incident description. You can easily download this as an Excel spreadsheet with the details of all your lost time injury claims for the last five or 10 years. Looking at your injury data in different ways can help you tailor your injury prevention initiatives helping you identify issues specific to your workplace. The Injury Prevention Forecaster helps you understand the potential savings you can realize by preventing certain types of injuries in your workplace. You can set targets and create models that estimate the cost savings that could be achieved. The tool helps you understand the data from your business, identify areas for improvement, and create a business case for investment into equipment or changes in process to prevent future incidents. For example, a company could aim to reduce their falls from elevation using ladders through changing to work platforms for certain activities and reduce back injuries from lifting through assistive equipment. The Injury Prevention Forecaster will show you a detailed graph of those savings over time. In this example, these two injury prevention initiatives could result in savings of $120,000. The Industry Risks tool shows the most commonly written orders in each industry. It gives you a closer look at the regulations safety officers are most often citing giving you an opportunity to be proactive toward injury prevention in your workplace. Clicking on any of the titles in the word cloud enables you to drill down to the more specific issues, allowing you to see at a glance the common health and safety issues in your industry, helping you prepare and protect your workers. The Employer Health and Safety Planning Toolkit is a powerful tool with huge amounts of health and safety data specific to your organization. As well as the tools highlighted here, there is information on your organization's return to work performance and links to other downloadable reports. WorkSafeBC.com has resources to all the features of this tool, helping you get the most from your health and safety data. To improve your company's health and safety performance, Go to WorkSafeBC.com, log in, and start using the toolkit today.
Thank you so much for watching that video with me. I hope you found it enjoyable. We have about three videos that I um, recall from memory um, to help outline what you can find in the Employer Health and Safety Planning Toolkit. And that's the most comprehensive video we have because it really does walk you through a bulk of all the different um, functions of it. Um, but if you ever wanted to present something to an executive in your organization, there is a higher level presentation um, that's less than three minutes that uh, does a great job as well. Just doesn't get into the details and show you where to click and do all those special little detailed uh, things that are required to really utilize that tool to its full function. On this slide, and you're not expected to actually uh, read all the content, but it's just giving you little snippets of things that I'll be discussing. So you can see in the video that there's a lot of data that's available um, to your organization within it and quite a variety of interactive screens. Managing health and safety is a multifaceted business. So we do have that employer health and safety planning toolkit page um, that you can most easily access by typing in EHSPTK into the search box on worksafebc.com. And here is where you will find these resources that are displayed right now. These include the videos that I just spoke to you about. It will give you information that you really need to mine and understand your data and um, how the Employer Health and Safety Planning Toolkit can be used, including its functionality. We have a bit of a manual there as well. I particularly like the resource called, Where Could You Focus Your Health and Safety Plan? Because it does explain everything um, there for you in a quick, concise way. And don't forget the importance of utilizing the knowledge of your workers and joint health safety committees to improve the health and safety culture in your workplace and implement changes that are most effective for you. I'm gonna to go to the next slide now, um, which actually goes to questions. And I see that we have some questions from the chat that Erica will be fielding and I'll let uh, Wayne help us um, run through these questions. Great, thank you, Megan and Erica. Um, so let's go to some of these questions um, for you. I'm just gonna bring up my view here, one sec. Okay, so, um, question I've got here is, how is the experience rating done if your company is only being open for one to two years? Thank you for that question. I did type in a response, but I, I also wanted to share with everyone. So the moment that the firm has, um, the first year that the firm has reported payroll. So for example, if the firm started in 2020, uh, which was two years ago, uh, the first year that they reported payroll that hits the three-year window, experience weight rating will commence. So for example, a firm that started in 2020, they reported payroll for 2020. The first year that experience rating will start would be um, 2022. Great, thank you, Erica. Um, in, the, in the toolkit under financial summary, what does the maximum potential savings specifically mean and what can employers do to be proactive to implement those uh, necessary savings. Wayne, can I get you to repeat that? I sure can. So in the finance, in the toolkit oh. under financial summary, yeah, gotcha. what does the maximum potential savings specifically mean and what can employers do to proactively implement some savings? Items I savings. believe specifically what that section is looking at is the experience rating that Erica outlined. Um, so what I would recommend is going in there and exploring a bit. If you want someone to partner with you, like myself or someone on my team, all you have to do is contact me by email at megan.martin at worksafebc.com. And I can actually share screens or you could share your screen and we can actually talk talk through it together, but it should be looking at your employer experience rating. And that's where you have an opportunity to see some um, reductions by reducing claims, reducing the cost of those claims, or with the three-year window that Erica talked about, actually seeing your rates change when that performance starts to change over time. 
great. Thanks, Megan. Another question I have here is, um, what is the top cost for a disability award? Uh, is that broken down by the, the same way that temporary wage loss as temporary wage loss? Megan, you might be able to provide a bit more information about the cost. Um, it, it will vary depending. We can take a look at those, but I'm not too sure what the overall top cost is for disability award. We can take a look at um, into that uh, if we can park that question and then uh, I can take a, a deeper dive into that. But in terms of the dampening measure, I see that that question looks like there's two parts. Um, the same dampening measure applies uh, to, to all the, the claims costs. And I looked at that um, question as well. I'm not able to answer that off the top of my head. Immediately, I was going to, um, if it was a work-related death. Um, and so that answer is clearly not the right answer here. So yet again, some of these questions are a bit technical. Happy to find the answer for you. Just don't have them off the top of my head. It's not something I deal with on a daily basis. Thank you. That's great. Um, one other, maybe just for clarification, um, a comment here, May 2020 seems the last time uh, an update on the tablet information was done. When do you do those updates? Uh, we put in a request to our department that manages data. So that request is actually active right now and they're working on it uh, this week, could go into next week. So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks, we'll be able to see some updated data. Apologies for those uh, delays. Um, you know, looks like we didn't have a good system in there to automatically update it without a manual request. So thank you for catching that and bringing it to my attention. It is underway. Excellent, excellent. Thanks, Megan. Another question here. We actively engage in a return to work program offering modified duties to reduce impact resulting from the duration of the claim. However, we lose weeks of a worker being away as we have difficulty engaging in case with case managers. We have solicited the help of a third party um, company, but these turnarounds are quite slow. Is there anything more an employer can do to help reduce the financial impacts of this? Which I think is a, a widespread comment I would say that I get most of the time. Um, so maybe Megan, Erica, is there something you could um, help our uh, viewers with? I'm actually looking online to see if I could give you a better answer, if I could just buy myself a bit of time here. Give me a second. Yeah. Hopefully I can find it quickly. No problem. While uh, Megan's looking at that, you know, and again, part of the uh, strategy for the Manufacturing Safety Alliance will be to reach out to um, most, if not all of our high experience rating members that you know have a rating that is in a surcharge and again we will be adapting our programs around how do we effectively uh, set up an action plan to start to work on some of these areas um, so you can start to you know put pieces into play and start to see hopefully a reduction in your um, in your surcharge and get you on the right track to savings in your premiums. Megan I'll, I think you might be ready. So sorry, I see you bought me time. I got a dead end on my first attempt. What I'm trying to find you here is a specific um, line that you could call. Um, I believe uh, they recently changed the name of this um, line and now it's called the, got it, finally, huh, the claims nurse line. And I'm going to enter the details into the chat but I will provide you um, the phone number right here. It's 1-877-633-6233. So if you have any questions as it relates to return to work, we have nurses actively waiting to answer questions and they'll be able to give you tips and advice on how to nav navigate things at WorkSafe BC and how to um, try to expedite or communicate more clearly with employers. Anything you could think of, this nurse line will be able to help you. I'm going to attach all of the information um, for you right now in the chat as well. Great. 
Thank you again, Megan and Erica, for sharing this important information. And I hope it was really useful for people because, again, there's a lot of technical information here. Again, refer back to this presentation. If you have some specifics, you can reach out to your safety advisors, myself or Megan. Again, we're here to provide education and clarity to this and hopefully lead you to the right answers in order to you know, help you lower your insurance premium. So again, thank you, Megan and Erica, for today. And I want to thank everyone for participating. Um, if we didn't get to your questions, or if you do have, we'll do our best to follow up if there's some questions that might come up afterwards that uh, you thought about. Um, additional resources will be available on our website tomorrow. Please visit our site at any time for news and resources and event information. And we'll also email you tomorrow with a link of the recorded webinar and related resources. Just before I go to completely close, I just want to offer just a minute, uh, Megan or Erica, if there's anything else you wanted to add in conclusion of your presentation today. I just want to thank everybody for showing up and let you know that I'm serious when I gave my email address out. I don't uh, I do that for everybody. So please feel free to contact me if there's anything that can I, I can elaborate um, more clearly or answer in more detail, or if I said specifically contact me, please do so. I will get back to you in a timely manner. Thank you very much for having me as well. Um, like I mentioned earlier, or all of you have mentioned, it's, it's quite technical, um, the information about experience rating. So also reach out, I'll, uh, I'll leave um, our classification and rates team email as well if there's questions about uh, if, if we want to do a little bit of a deeper dive into experience rating we can do that as well um so i'll i'll pop that in the chat as well so thank you that's, very much that's great thank you very much erica and, and megan and again i just encourage you to reach out to your safety advisors here at the alliance as well or even myself i'd be happy to walk through how it is we can help you with the development of your resources point you to some of our training or really just work with our safety advisors consultatively to work on those areas that might, um, again, make those necessary improvements and hopefully put you on the right track to lowering your insurance premiums. If you haven't done so already, please reserve your tickets for our Make It Safe Live event, which is happening on October 14th. And then, of course, we have our two-day online event, which is October 27th and 28th. We have over 60 speakers and uh, experts that will be joining us. And we really are excited to have our in-person event on October 14th. And so please do take the time to check us out and register. And um, again, don't miss this opportunity to learn from industry experts, network with your peers and get that training and professional development credits that you need. And that's one of the big focuses of this year's of um, make it safe. So again, thank you for attending. Please take uh, time to check your inbox for our survey link and share your feedback and suggestions on how we might improve our future webinars. So on behalf of myself and my team, uh, we're here always to help and serve. I wish you a safe and happy week and enjoy the sun, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us.